This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Broadcasting live from Honolulu, Hawaii. This is every other week sequence of learning from the past for the future of human humane architecture of Think Tech Hawaii with your host DeSoto Brown and Martin Despang. Hi DeSoto. How do you do Martin? We've I'm, got lots to talk about. I'm okay, but I'm a little bit worried and that's what we do the show about because there's one of my favorite places going away and that's there's right. a saying or feeling that sometimes you more appreciate things when they're gone. So let's talk about what we will miss and let's walk along the shore of Waikiki on the beach. Absolutely. And if we can get picture number one for that. This is what you mostly see because it's prime beachfront. So these restaurants are rather upscale, you know, white tablecloth and waiters similarly yes. dressed, right? Yes, and that's the Halikulani Hotel. Exactly. So let's head sort of uh, uh, towards Eva. Yep. So next we're going to go one over, and we're almost at Fort de Rissi, right? Correct. And it seems like there's nothing else to come. That's but right. Next picture. Surprise, surprise. There is something. There it is. Let's rinse our shoes off, which yes. this guy is doing there. Yeah, because we've got sand on our feet. Exactly. And let's get in this sort of obscure place. W w what is that? Next picture. Well, that's the Shorebird that was established in 1979. That's a restaurant in the bottom of the Reef Hotel. Mm -hmm. And it is. And we feature some of the sort of uh, things that attract uh, people like this. These are the more sort of ordinary average tourists that, you know, all buy the same local dress yes. when they're here and feel yes. good. And they don't want to go to the fancy places. They want to have a lunch that includes uh, all-you-can-eat fish, which is, you know, we're at the ocean, yes. and you have a pretty spectacular buffet, yep. and in the evening you can sing karaoke. That's right. And how does that place look like if you go in and we bring the next picture? Well, it kind of looks like that. Mm -hmm. That's Martin pointed out very cleverly that it might appear that this is a an actual photograph of the place. And in, in reality, this is a composite photo that uses a background, which is not the real background that you actually see there, with a well-lit interior. Because if we go to the next picture, what it really looks like is inside is very dark and the outside is very bright. That's not necessarily a bad thing, though, because as you pointed out, the austere, plain interior makes you either focus on the people you're with or the view outside. It's actually a good thing. So number seven shows that when you go watch uh, Direction Diamond Head again, you see Diamond Head, and this is a real picture because I took that, right. and I didn't Photoshop Diamond Head in there. Right. It's actually what you see, and everything else is pretty much in the shade. It's a shadow. Right. And you see what you came here for, because you don't want to necessarily see other people that you don't know. You don't want to see pieces of furniture, not necessarily. At the top, this is uh, left, is the only piece of decoration, which is also kind of the sign. So it's like a wooden surfboard that has the name of the place. But Correct. that's pretty much the major decoration. And the next picture looks the other direction. And the other thing that I would point out, too, is this is the original structure of this 1955 hotel, which is when it opened. So it doesn't have a lot of stuff going on there. It's a very plain interior. That's the way they built it, and that's the way it has remained, mostly open with sliding glass windows and just the plain concrete of the interior. Mm -hmm. And when the sun sets, this sort of gets even more intense because also the lighting in that place yeah. is very low. Right. So this is our uh, lovely guest from our tropical tourism show. And when we went there, it's we realized that the, the absence of stuff, of decoration, of interior, actually enhances the presence of yourself and Who the ones with. you go there with. Correct. And also, as you can see, the ocean, because there are some spotlights on the yes. outside. So it really sort of dramatizes the... Yes the actual stuff that you want to see and that you might not want to be distracted from. And the setting. So it's the natural and setting that you are enjoying when you're exactly. in there if you're close to the ocean. And next picture here is, uh, you know, the main feature is that is that salad bar. Uh, and then as part of the salad bar, you can actually always get the salad bar, but what you see barely there in front, we go to the next picture, is a feature that has been around also since this picture I pulled from the web. It's probably from the 80s, you would think, right? Possibly, yeah. 80s, 90s, it's an old promotional photograph. And what are they doing on the left over there? 
They do. This is a feature. You can actually get your fish or your meat raw on the table, and then you take it over, and then you prepare it yourself. You grill it yourself. And, and as it, you pointed out, this is not only sort of a something that's that you can look at for entertainment. Mm -hmm. You can watch other people do it, mm -hmm. but it's interactive. You can do it yourself, and mm -hmm. not only is that something for other people to watch, but you control your own food. It's mm -hmm. not somebody off in the kitchen who you can't talk to mm -hmm. or see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can make my food the way I want to. I feel like I have something going on here, mm -hmm. and it's part of the enjoyment of the experience, particularly because this is a low cost, fairly low budget place, yeah. so it's a little perk that you get that you don't get other places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. and. We like to call things like that performative. Exactly, that's the word I wanted. And um, and you see everything else in that place is performance. There's one other thing that you can also say is iconic about the place, and this is a detail. We like to zoom into the architecture because we think good architecture and good places are getting better the closer you look. Right. And the next picture is, is that sort of main feature that totally um, uh, surprised and got me thrilled because this is the predominant way of, of climate control, of achieving thermal comfort in a post-fossil way or in a pre-fossil way or in, with little fossil yeah. because these are fans. And fans, you know, is in the tropics the main way you get the heat that rises up and then you basically take it out by pushing it away by turning the, by turning the wings of the fans. But usually in, in these days, you have um, a, um, um, a decentralized way mm -hmm. Uh, where basically everything, every unit has one motor, yes. so all these motors can break. And this reminded us of the old days where the streetcars were around, where also sort of everything was basically centralized. Right, exactly. And then, you know, you were distributing the, the electricity through the cables. And, and each individual streetcar touched the cable and got its power that exactly. way. Exactly. Right. So this is, and here you think, once again, this must have been the way it was. As you pointed out correctly, this is also the way it was in factories at the very beginning. Yeah. But you pointed out the dangers if this is sort of on the level of where you operate and yeah. the belts snap and, you know, they yeah. chip off people's head. It's a problem. Yeah. Obviously here we have never heard of such accident because up in the ceiling. Right, and so nobody can touch this it. This doesn't exist, but right. it's... It's, it looks, and it certainly is nostalgic, but it's once again, it's performative. I mean, they still benefit from that fact that they only have to repair that one engine. Right. And whenever a belt gets you know, old, it's like in your car, you gotta change your belt every now. Exactly. But this is way less of an effort this than replacing, replacing they, all the engines. Each one engine. of those units that turns has no power, so it just is the matter of the exactly, belt turning. Exactly. And so it's far less likely yeah. to break, and if something does break, as you just said, mm -hmm. you replace the belt. Mm -hmm. And what it does is I love to look up there and see this sort of beautiful kinetic play yeah. of things moving and the belts moving. And it is, uh, it is something that makes you feel very tropical, and, but it's, it's not a sentimental, it's not the fan that is the manual fan, right? right? It's, right. it's a machine-driven fan. And as you said, too, this is performative. Mm -hmm. This is something, this is a performance for you to look up at and enjoy. Mm -hmm. may not seem like it, mm -hmm. but it is something that's intriguing and fun. And particularly, I can imagine as a kid, I would have loved to look at that oh, thing happening on the ceiling. Absolutely, it reminds me of a little uh, you know, one of our guests, Nicole Horry, who is promoting the, um, the sky driving, how I call it, basically uh, gondolas yeah. and, and ski lifts. Yeah. Uh, I, had a, I had a gondola, I keep telling her, when I was a kid that I played with that was attached to something on the floor and at, the, at, yeah. the, at the door, and I had a little crank, and yeah. I could move it up and down. It's exactly the same thing. Right? It's so exactly it's a, the same thing. It's a very cool thing, and it's cool and cool, yeah. you know, we point out. Physically it's, cool as well as culturally cool. Exactly. And as you point out, that's obviously been around so pretty much and you've known the place ever since back then I I can and remember it was it and it's interesting because one of the things I wanted to mention that you also acknowledged this is a word-of-mouth place mm -hmm. you find out about the shorebird because somebody tells you or you happen mm -hmm. to go there mm -hmm. it's not a big budget of advertising and back in the early 80s this was a cool place to go mm -hmm. um, and not only for the food but also it was mm -hmm. a disco too yeah. so the shorebird yeah, disco yeah, yeah. the shorebird yeah. dining room yeah. and yeah, disco yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, was a cool place to very hang cool. out and so let's you're still going there because you're a very cool person. exactly so thank you. We go into your archives now because yes, we want to actually do. check out how it has looked like and surprise, surprise, it pretty much still looks. So here, there besides a couple of, you know, swimwear, we don't even see many people there. Yeah. 
but it's pretty yeah. much the same. So this is a postcard of the Reef Hotel about, about, about the time that it opened. It opened in 1955, this entire complex, and the Reef was one of the first big hotels built in Waikiki in this time period of the mid-1950s. Uh, at the same time, uh, the Princess Kaiulani, the Biltmore Hotel, and the Rosalie Apartments all were, were opened. They were all about 10 stories tall, and at the time that seemed like an amazing huge boom mm -hmm. going on in Waikiki. Mm -hmm. Of course, a lot more was going to be coming in the near future, but mm -hmm. at the time it seemed very big. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the, the postcard they used to, as you correctly said, promoted it, and mm -hmm. we avoid to say brand because that's what we do these days, Correct. but we prefer to say they promoted it. All right. And here again, early view, early postcard view, diamond head in the background, and the two structures, the, the larger reef hotel on the left, and then the two, the smaller buildings on the right, which is what we're focusing on right now, and that's mm -hmm. something we'll get to as we get further along in the program to discuss what's going to happen here and the changes that are going to be coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm to this area very soon by high shorebird. That's what we're talking about. And, and way back, which is why we love the mid-century modern, uh, which I always think was a total piece of artwork. Yep. I mean, America was. Yes. And let's look at the, the sort of the, the little uh, flyers or, or booklets or brochures right. they, they did to basically promote it. Correct. And so these are two very early pieces from the Reef Hotel. The Edgewater was another hotel across the street, which was owned by the same company. And on the right, you can see this very 50s uh, type of layout and um, appearance. This is... Um, the folder that went in every one of those guest rooms that had information about the hotel, where the dining room was, where the laundry was, and all that kind of stuff. And it's got this very 50s fish motif mm -hmm. in which there are architectural renderings of the dining room, which is the lower picture, and the upper one is the bar. Of course, things have changed since this was first done. But when these renderings were done, I'm not even sure the hotel had opened yet. This mm -hmm. is before there were photographs mm -hmm. of the places when this would have been right in the room right when first pe people first started mm -hmm. coming there. Mm -hmm. And some of this architectural look mm -hmm. we're going to see as we continue in some of the photographs that you took. A absolutely. And we wanted to point out as sort of culturally observing, that wasn't retro. That wasn't no. looking at sort of the indigenous and, and all this stuff and right. the hula skirt and all this stuff. Right, right. right. This was pretty much very modern. Uh, but it was, as we like to say, exotic because this yeah. wasn't invasively dropping some kind of mainland thing. This is capitalizing on the view and the breeze, and it's using very modern graphics, and obviously it's using the fish as what swims in the ocean and what is the main dish they were serving, and they're right. still doing, and they're sort of, you guys have to go, you got a couple weeks Just left, to, and to you, do that, the shorebird. you do that lunch, fish, all you can eat included, you know? Offer. And you know what else I like? Just look at the two. There's an eye. Each fish has an eye. Oh, yeah. And the eye is actually an element of the picture. So in the top picture, it's the sun. And in the lower picture, it's a hanging light fixture. I think that's really clever. It's pretty awesome. And so let's take the next picture, which is also our permanent background. And we're sitting at the, what you taught me, uh, it's called the kidney pool. That's right. That's what is called a kidney-shaped pool or a free-form-shaped <laughs> pool. This was very popular in the 1950s when swimming pools, uh, particularly in southern parts of the United States and Southern California, were being installed in a lot of homes. Mm -hmm. And it is this p very uh, <laughs> distinctive shape. And in this promotional photograph, which is a postcard, you can see the pool in the foreground, the, the lower building, the shorter building on the left, mm -hmm. the connecting mm -hmm. platform, and then the bigger reef hotel on the right mm -hmm. and uh, as you pointed out up in the upper left hand corner that same kidney shaped swimming pool is still there today but probably for not very long we will talk about that in a bit yeah, yeah. and I'll say hi to my former Bavarian landlady in Tucson, Arizona, because she had a kidney pool <laughs> at her ranch house or outside of her ranch house. So hi, Trouty. <laughs> so let's go back to these days and look at that sort of uh, backside of uh, the Shorebird restaurant. If you look very close and you have very good eye vision, you can see at the very right corner and see, and maybe Ray can oh, zoom in, see you it. see a, a little bonsai, a neon sign that says Shorebird. Vertically. Right, but it's, it's very nondescript, it's correct. very, very humble, and once again, it basically capitalizes on that people know and feel where yeah. the ocean is, so they will be drawn to it no matter what. Correct, you're gonna wanna walk right? to it, right. But you can see indicated and implied there's something you talked about, the other name for the pool is, is freeform pool. Correct. So we see a free form here yep. indicated, so let's look closer what that is and go to the next picture. 
Right, and it, this is an interesting thing. There is this round, we've got the free form rounded pool, but we've also got this large, these two circular motifs that one is coming up from the lower parking level, and then at the second level, there's yet another one. So in this very rectangular, long, skinny lot with rectangular buildings on it, they also introduce these rounded forms. Mm -hmm. And the next picture goes actually down uh, and, and then walks up, and uh, this little picture at the bottom in the middle is what this thing reminds me of. This is what, when you go online, you, it says it's one of the first pool uh, zoos in the world. And how do you call these birds? Those little birds that live in there, they're not that little, are penguins. Exactly. So that's a penguin pool and, with, with ramps for and the And that's from 1935, uh, designer architect Lubitkin in London, and it reminded me of that. An equally very profane typology, this is not a bohemian, this is not an exclusive stuff where yeah. some kings or queens walk right. up, it's these little right. birds. Right. And, and we have a similar situation, it's these dirty cars that basically park down in this parking garage that you said was one of the first one that was. This is was the first parking garage in Waikiki. Mm -hmm. so we expect there to be multi-level parking, parking garages in Waikiki in abundance today. Mm -hmm. This is the first one that had two levels that was ever built in the middle 1950s, mm -hmm. and that's the granddaddy of all the other ones we have today. And, and this granddaddy does it masterly. I've never seen it anywhere else, how masterly you take people who come out of that car and process them yes. through a space to yes. basically bring them up to the to the main stage, yes. that level with the pool. And this you make that and you make that progression a part of the architecture. Absolutely. It isn't hidden away in the corner. No. It's a feature to look down at no. and participate in. Exactly. And next picture, once you sort of get them spitting out there and on the main level, we want to pay attention as our sort of, you know, check on architectures gets better the closer you, you get. You see this very, very spaghetti-like skinny columns yeah. that today would make one big one. Yes. They decide to do small, really skinny ones. Yes. And then pay attention to the detail at the at the top right, where basically where they where they hit that, that ceiling, there's this little recessed reveal, yeah. a shadow reveal that reminded you of what? Well, it reminded me of what we talked about in an earlier show, which were canopies that have holes for palm trees to grow through. Mm -hmm. And so there are other such uh, buildings like that in Waikiki, and this reminds me of those palm tree canopies with a hole. Absolutely. So at the, to the right of this is where we go next in the next picture. There's a stair that gets you up to the next level. You can see a very fantastic feature here that's sort of the balustrade is sort of a double wall construction and it basically is supposed to uh, take <laughs> vegetation green on the inside. So right. once again, it's it doesn't look like a balustrade. It looks like a green, yes. you know, a, a green right. uh, And it's layer. a substantial feature. It's mm -hmm. a big, thick thing, mm -hmm. but it's softened by putting the vegetation in there. Absolutely. So when we keep going in next picture, you end up, and I'm already up on the next level <laughs> looking down. You can see that this is really the main theme. It applies to everything, sort of the balustrade that fences in the, the hole, the circle. And then in the back, you can see this is basically the front yards for the ground level hotel rooms, which the next picture I was allowing myself to stalk and look at one family here who was taking advantage of that. And it's very, very cool that in this sort of streamlined form um, of these the, you know, green cavity spaces, um, you can find that kind of privacy. Uh, so eye level is pretty much all green. Yeah. So you have privacy there, but at the same time, you're you're part of that that whole uh, outdoor experience. Yeah, and you're also exposed to the natural light. You're exposed to the natural air movement. So you're not you are closed off for privacy and sun protection, but you're not hermetically sealed. Mm -hmm. Which we also then best see on the next picture, which I took looking basically, you know, all the way, and you see these, wherever there's a column, there's another unit. So right. once again, it looks like on eye level, it looks like you're somewhere in the bushes, in the yes. jungle, yes. pretty much, and only heads pop out at times, and when you see, when you sit, you don't see that. And then these, uh, these, these units, the glass walls are basically staggered, um, so they're shifted. And there are these skinny columns again. Yeah. Here they didn't seem to feel to have a double column because there's probably no car that's going to crash yes. in there, so there was no need. So once again, we would wish, you know, architects and designers would 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 design so uh, human activity and event sensitive these yeah. days, which we would Correct. encourage them to do again. Correct. 
That being said, um, it, this will be redesigned. Yes. And if you guys go online on the website of the owner, uh, the Outrigger Reef, you can see them reporting on what we see in the next picture. Yeah. Which is pretty much uh, getting rid of what we talk about today and closing shorebird and uh, bulldozing down these buildings and also basically um, taking out that kidney pool and making it sort of a lifestyle uh, lawn, I guess, would maybe be a fair way to call yeah, it. Yeah, there, there, you, you also said this is kind of a Malka to Makai concept, which is maybe a little too grandiose for that. Mm -hmm. um, the, it, it's situated on a long, skinny, rectangular lot. Mm -hmm. And what they're saying is we'll open it all up. And so we've got this grand, as you said, lawn or a grand open space without anything in the way to look out to the Pacific Ocean and the beach and vice versa look in. But there is an element on the far right which makes us uncomfortable, which is a high rise, which as uh, we've discovered, is not necessarily going to be built right away. They are gonna wait till economically it makes more sense to do it. As you pointed out, what we don't like about it is its configuration or its placement. It is blocking the trade winds if it's placed like that. If it was to be placed at the opposite angle, the way the other two buildings are, you'd have the airflow around it and Absolutely. Preferably, that's the way we would like it to see. Mm -hmm. We'd like, and to we see can it. even make this more clear with the next picture, where you see the bigger context. Right. And you could basically, as we say, as a rule of thumb, you can categorize the existing buildings in good and bad ones as far as the bigger thermal comfort on it on an urban scale, because all the buildings we are talking linear buildings they're facing or or directing Malka Makai are allowing the winds to blow through them whereas the ones who are turned 90 degrees and are running uh, Eva and Diamond Head are basically the wrong ones because they're blocking the wind. They are and, barriers and, to the wind. And we believe this should be actually be a bioclimatic zoning, and our friend Kurt Sandburn talked about it. He got really mad about the Ritz-Carlton. I was just going to say, you that know? is exactly one of the problems with the Ritz, is that they built in that configuration rather than exactly. going with the wind, they block the wind. Exactly. So our recommendation would be just turn the thing, but then also the next picture, we have some other recommendation, whereas we might not be able to save most likely shorebird, it will go Correct. away. Let's just Correct. face that as, as sad as reality. it is. But let's rethink that. What is the other sort of uh, subtitle of the show is the humbleness and hospitality, yeah. which you discovered or you want to point out is an island tradition. It is. And one of the things that is very noticeable that's changed over the last 50 or 60 years is that lots of times in the early hotels, the, the, the ones that we're talking about in the reef and up into the 1970s, those hotel rooms were very austere. They were very plain in comparison to what all of us expect today. They were plain concrete boxes. They were very minimally carpeted, not a lot of plush anything. Uh, today we expect this mound of pillows on the bed and a mm -hmm. big cushy comforter mm -hmm. and all that stuff. They didn't do that in those days. And customers were very happy with it. What we see in the top picture there, it, the swimming pool that says, wish you were here, is the Surf Jack Hotel, which has been a recently remodeled 50s or 60s building in which they've taken the enforced austerity and the plainness and tried to turn it into kind of a branding thing where they give you some other little amenities, but they are admitting that it is a very plain and austere room, like the two that you see in the bottom, which are photographs taken in the 1950s and 60s of uh, hotel rooms in Waikiki. Mm -hmm. So the next picture is food for thought for, comes from our tree texture team. Uh, in pretty much sort of reactivating potentially um, that sort of island tradition. And this is my favorite picture that I got from you, and I can see you can't say it or or visualize it better what you're talking about. Right. And you said there is no TV, and you're thinking, why should there be a TV? Because this is the best show you can watch. Is That's the what view you come your, here. Of right? The view out of your room. And this is, a again, a plain concrete box. You can see the textured walls where the plywood mm -hmm. made contact with the concrete when it was poured. Absolutely. There's no air conditioning, no radio, no television, two beds, a little bit of furniture, this kind of kooky swinging mm -hmm. wicker mm -hmm. chair that is just attached to the ceiling. Awesome. But the Kauai Surf, and that's what this is, 
when it opened was considered a very comfortable hotel. And yet today we would say, oh my God, there's no air conditioning? Uh -huh. How dare you? Some would say, we, we as the tree texture team, we say this is the epitome of the easy breezy uh, tropical sure exotic. And we design things like that again. Next picture, please. This is within uh, Primitiva, um, sort of a, a solution or a proposition for dwelling again in balance and taking advantage of the outdoors. But while we're in a sort of a more culinary uh, gastronomy, gastronomy typology, I, this reminds me of a project we did way back, which is the next picture, which is my hometown, which um, you can, if I would have taken the picture a little bit more from in the room, you would see better that this is actually facing with a large glass front, the backside of the classicist opera house in my hometown. So the same goal was obviously here also with some free form and, and um, swooping curves to basically say, you know, make everything nondescript and stay in the background and capitalize on the people there. Right. And that's why the, the furniture, you know, is Arna Jacobson, you know, chairs and, and null chairs, but, but otherwise they're just these ovals, which are light fixtures, yes. which just basically anchor the place for meeting with the people and even the, the benches are part of the wall. So the attempt was to design less right. to capitalize more on, on the view. And probably Correct. we could have done even better if I now revisit that, I said I should have done even less. Correct, but. right. And a view, like as we've been saying, a view can be a natural view, but it can also be a man-made view. Mm -hmm. An urban view can be just as appealing to look yeah. at in a space like this as lo looking at the ocean or Diamond Head. Mm -hmm. So the last picture we conclude the show with is once again we go back to Primitiva. This is how she looks at the top right, and this is Basically, Paina Cafe, who had to go away from War Warehouse, which is about to be torn down. Yes, we did a is. show about it. So once again, our attempt is like <clears throat> less design, less is more. The yeah. old Mies van der Rohe sort of goal, sort of the tropical version of that is yes. really capitalizing on what we have here and not interiorize and not over design. So our Plato year is, you know, for the outrigger, of course, on a macro scale, you know, turn the tower around. But then to other potential clients in the future, maybe there is some revisiting of the island tradition Absolutely. of humbleness and hospitality. Correct. And um, unfortunately, when things are redesigned and rebuilt these days and renovated, it usually is that they go from humble to upscale. They go from lower cost to expensive. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not that you shouldn't be redesigning or fixing things up, but perhaps there are times when you don't necessarily make it expensive and more upscale. Mm -hmm. You keep it down to the humble level that the shorebird is. Mm -hmm. So with that, we're at the end of the show. Uh, and if you guys enjoyed it, then be with us in two weeks. We're going to have another episode, and we already know what it is. That's and we right. give it an equally cryptic title. We call it Architecture. Okay. And then we call it um, Sticking Stack Lanai's. So hopefully that's that it. makes you excited enough yeah. to want to know what's behind that. And that's going to be historic ones and modern ones, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Until then, stay happy and healthy. Bye-bye.